Hey guys, so in today's video I'm going to teach you how to squat or if you already have an idea how to squat but you're noticing some things that are off with your squat, I'm also going to touch upon some things to look out for in order not, for you not to get injured. So if this is your first time landing on this channel, I'm Alexis from FlexusFitness.com. I'm a personal trainer and movement coach with over six years of experience in the health and fitness industry. And at Flexus Fitness, we make sure to teach proper fitness and that means we go down, we start right from the basics with fundamental movements such as the squats before advancing to other complicated movements. So in today's video, I'm going to teach you how to squat properly and the things you need to look out for in order to stay in amazing shape all year round without getting injured. So let's get into it. So the first thing we're going to cover in this video is getting the most out of your squat by having the proper mobility. So there are two key areas that commonly most people lack mobility in, and that's your thoracic spine, which is basically uh, your mid-back, so it's up until your ribs, and um, your, your hips. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna roll out our thoracic spine. So over here I have a peanut ball, and it's you could do this with a foam roller too. So a foam roller you could find at most gyms, and if you don't have a foam roller, let's say you're working out at home and you wanna do this, um, then I highly suggest purchasing a foam roller or a peanut ball in order to do this. So I'm going to show you how to do this right now. Okay, so the T-spine roll, also known as the thoracic spine roll, is something that you want to do because oftentimes you may notice in your own squat, but because we're hunched over throughout the day, we're on our computers, on our phones, we tend to go into spinal flexion. So that means our, our spine kind of curves forward in the squat. So in order to avoid that, you want to... Put this in between your shoulder blades in order to loosen up those muscles and free that range of motion to get into spinal extension. So um, I'm going to demonstrate first. So you're going to take your peanut ball or your foam roller and you're going to put it in between your shoulder blades. So I like to put it on the ground first. It's kind of hard to get it there. So you might may need help the first time. Ask somebody and make sure that both sides of the balls are on each shoulder blade. So from here, you're gonna go into a glute bridge. So you're gonna simply raise your, your hips upwards and you're gonna give yourself a big hug. And now I'm just gonna think about rolling side to side. And then I'm gonna breathe out and relax into it. So then I would wanna move down all the way up until my, my ribs, so the start of my ribs, and keep on doing that. So by doing this, you'll allow more spinal extension and avoid rounding your shoulders in the squat. So if you notice that you tend to round your shoulders in a squat, this will help you. So the next thing we want to address for mobility is tightness in our hips. So if you've noticed that in your squat you can't go deeper than, let's say, 90 degrees, chances are you have tight hips and you're lacking hip flexion. So the next thing I'm gonna show you is going to address that tightness. So you're gonna place your feet a bit wider than shoulder width and your feet could be slightly turned out. This also, your foot positioning also depends on your hip mobility. So I'm gonna turn my feet out slightly and I'm gonna place your arms out in front of you, roll your shoulders back and think about bringing your rib cage towards your pelvis. You wanna keep your core tight so that you don't lose that um, spinal positioning. So. Now I'm just going to simply lower myself down and from here I'm going to think about keeping my chest up. So again, I don't want to round forward because we just rolled out our, our um, thoracic spine and I want to think about staying in good position. And I'm going to think about bringing my elbows towards my knees. So from here I'm going to do five reps pushing my knees outwards. Notice here that as I'm pushing my knees outwards, I'm not moving my feet. So my heels are staying on the ground and I'm simply just moving my knees outwards. So I'm gonna do five reps with both knees, then you would do five reps with the left knee and left elbow only. And then five reps with the right one. So I'm going a bit quicker than usual here, but you'd really wanna take your time with this. And each, each rep, you'd want to think about pushing it outwards a bit more to really work through that range of motion. Then the last one you'd want to do is without your elbows. So you're going to think about using your glute muscles to push your knees outwards. 
So you're gonna bring your arms out in front of you. And staying in this deep squat position, I'm simply pushing my knees outwards using my glute muscles. So notice I'm not bouncing up and down, I'm staying in this position. And five. Then lower yourself down slightly and come back up slowly. So if it's your first time doing deep squat hip openers, you can take a break between the sequence. So you could do five reps with both knees, take a stand up, take a break, then do the left side, right side, take a break, and then finish off without push without using your elbows to push your knees outwards. Because it is, it does feel a bit tough at the beginning, especially if you do have very tight hips. So the last thing that we're gonna do in the mobility warm-up is deep squat thoracic rotations. So although you're not rotating in a squat, it's important to to do the thoracic rotations because again, we're trying to loosen up the thoracic spine. So just to explain again why we want to be doing this, it's because if you're going into a squat and as you squat down, you're curving forward, you're automatically putting a bunch of pressure and strain on your lower back. So then that leads into low back pain. So the squat isn't the problem with that, it's how you're performing the squat and what's limiting you from getting into a good and proper position. And then again, for the hips, if you're lacking hip flexion, you won't be able to go deep down to your squat. And once again, you're gonna put a lot of strain in your low back and your, your knees. So that's why we wanna do all this before doing the squat. So now we're gonna combine the thoracic rotation and the deep squat. So once again, you're gonna place yourself in the deep squat position. So remember, feet are a bit wide, the shoulder width, arms out in front of you, roll your shoulders back, brace your core. So think about bringing your rib cage towards your pelvis. And now lower yourself down while keeping the core engaged. And from here, I'm in the deep squat and I'm gonna place my right, uh, my sorry, my left fingers underneath my left um, foot, so underneath my toes, and I'm gonna rotate out to the side. And same thing with this one, you wanna do it slowly, and you wanna try to keep your chest upright as you rotate. And another thing you can think about doing is as you rotate to the opposite side, you can use, so right now I'm using my right arm, I'm pushing it against my knee to help me twist to the side. And then once again, you'll lower yourself down and rise up slowly. So you'll want to do five reps on each side. So now we just finished our mobility and we loosened up all the right areas that we needed to. Now we're going to move on to the second part before going to do the squat, and that's activation. So you want to learn how to activate your glutes particularly. Because a lot of times when people do movements such as squats or deadlifts, they're not engaging their glute muscles. So they're not they don't know how to engage their booty properly. And that takes away from building their booty because they're not, they're not working it. Those muscles are completely turned off and they're, they're compensating by using other muscles instead. So now we're gonna talk about activation. I'm gonna show you how to use those muscles. So it takes some mind to muscle connection. So we're gonna start off by just um, lying down and I'm going to show you how I engage my booty. So the first thing I'm going to show you is how to properly engage those muscles in your booty. So this takes some focus and at first it's not too obvious because it's not something that you really think about doing. So you're going to want to start off by touching your booty because you need to feel those muscles being engaged. And right now I'm going to go into full contraction. So I'm going to squeeze those muscles. So as you can see, everything is squeezed. And then I'm slowly going to release that tension. So I'm going to go 75% release, then 55, then 25, and then full release. So by doing a slow release after fully contracting, that really allows me to feel those muscles being engaged. So full contraction then slowly releasing them. So you'd want to do a couple of reps like this because it takes some time to get that feeling. So I'd say start off with five to 10 reps 
and really take your time. So as you can see, I, I did a full contraction and then I slowly release. Don't rush through it. That's not the point of glute activation. It's not an exercise. You're trying to activate those muscles. So you really want to take your time to fully engage them. So after you've done that a couple of times and you, you've learned how to engage your glutes, you'll want to go into a glute bridge. So once again, this, this could be used as an exercise, but right now we're going to be using it for glute activation. So we're going to focus on doing it slowly and in control. You're going to want to start off by lying down on your back, hands by, uh, arms by your side, and you're going to press your lower back into the ground. So that's going to engage your core. And from here, you're going to lift your hips and think about engaging those glutes. So squeeze, hold it there for three seconds, and lower yourself back down. And again, reposition your back. So press the lower back into the ground. Thrust your hips up, squeeze those glutes, and lower yourself back down. So if you, the, like I said before, the key thing that we want to be feeling here are your glutes. So if you start to feel this in your hamstrings or lower back, play with the way you position your feet, because that, that could help take away from anything you feel in your hamstrings. And also, Try not to lift your hips as high. So you don't have to lift them super high because remember, we're focusing on squeezing our glutes. So keep that in mind and you'll want to do, uh, you'll want to do this three times 10 reps. Now the next glute activation exercise I'm going to demonstrate is the, our clamshells. So this exercise is great because it helps strengthen your glute media. So that's the muscle that's right here. And muscle is weak, you'll have trouble balancing on one leg. So it's super important, and it's also important for squats because if you notice that your knees cave in as you squat, it could be that your glute medius is weak. So that's why I always like to strengthen this small muscle to make sure that we keep it strong. So you're gonna wanna, for the clamshells, you're gonna wanna place yourself on your side and your knees are gonna be bent and your feet are staying together. So I'm not, I'm not lifting them as I'm going to be rotating my uh, knee up. So now I'm gonna think about moving my knee up and squeezing that muscle and then bringing it back down slowly. So you could put your finger right there because it's all about feeling what muscle you're using. And as you come up, you should feel it. So it's not about having um, a big range of motion here. You don't have to bring your knee all the way up. You really just want to get it to that point where you're feeling that muscle, where you're starting to feel it being engaged. So you'll want to do 10 reps on each leg, and you could do that twice. Now, I know this seems like a lot to do before actually doing your squat workout, but I promise you, these two things are key in order for you to get better results and also for you to get the most out of each rep that you're doing in your squat. Because by loosening up those areas that we discussed at the beginning and by properly activating your glute muscles and knowing how to engage them, this will transfer over to when you're actually doing it in your squat. So you may not be doing as many squats as you were doing last week because you'll be engaging those muscles properly. So this will save you time during your workout, which gives you time to, prop to prepare before doing your squats. So now let's get into how to properly do a squat. So now that everything is, lim now we're, that we're all limbered up, we've activated our glutes, let's get into the proper squat positioning. So you're gonna start off with your feet a bit wider than shoulder width, and you're gonna place your arms out in front of you, roll your shoulders back and down. So you wanna think about bringing your shoulder blades back as well. And from here, you're gonna engage your core. So like I said before, think about bringing your rib cage towards your pelvis. So now my core is engaged and I wanna make sure that it stays engaged throughout the squat. Because if I lose that core engagement, I'll either end up uh, arching my lower back or again, I'll end up in that curved position which we want to avoid. So you wanna make sure that your core stays engaged, arms out in front of you, and now you're gonna go into the squat. So from here, you're gonna think about um, sitting back with your hamstrings. So this, this means that you're gonna be bending from your knees. So you don't wanna lean forward, you don't wanna be bending from your hips at all. So you're thinking about driving your knees out and leaning in into your hamstrings. 
So I'm going to lower myself down. And from here, I'm going to think about driving through my heels, pushing my knees upwards, uh, sorry, outwards and driving through my heels. So down, knees outwards and up. To go over the sequence again, I'll show you from the side very quickly so that you can see how it's supposed to look. So arms out in front, roll your shoulders back and down and think about bringing your shoulder, shoulder blades together. Now I'm going to engage my core. My head should be in a neutral position so I don't wanna tilt my chin down or look up. My eyes could look up or down, but the head stays here. And now I'm going to lower myself down and back up. I'm not uh, overarching or leaning forward. Everything is staying as one unit. So if you enjoyed this video, let me know in the comments below. And if you have any questions, let me know as well, whether it's about what we discussed in today's video or other things that you're, you, you feel yourself being limited to do. Um, that will give me new ideas for other content I could come up with to help you. So be sure to let me know in the comments below. And also share this with a friend, share it with your squat buddy, share it with somebody else who's maybe getting into fitness and wants to learn how to squat properly because this is such a key fundamental movement and it should be incorporated in your program. So you want to learn how to do it properly before moving onto the squat rack and then loading weight. You have to get the body weight squat down packed and make sure that you have the proper mobility and you know which muscles to engage while doing it. So let me know how it goes and I'll see you tomorrow. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel because I'm going to be posting new videos daily so you don't want to miss a fitness tip with flexes.